In this video we're going to go over how we can create an input form and how we can read that input and insert it into our database. Alright, so we're in our blog here and currently we have a nice front page here that's displaying all our posts but we don't have a way to submit posts on the front end so let's go ahead and create a form so we can start submitting content. So the first thing I want to do here is underneath my blog, underneath my post folder, I want to create a form and this form is going to be used for creating posts. So I will do a new file and I will call it forms.py. The next thing I want to do is I want to import my model and just to refresh our memory here this is what our models file looks like. It's basically the class of how our data is structured and stored in our database. So I want to import this class into my form. So I'm going to do that by going from dot models import post. So I'm importing my post model into my form so I can start using it. The next thing I want to do is I want to create a class called post form and this one actually needs some input to it and the input that it needs is model form now we don't have this currently imported yet so at the very top of our file let's go from django.forms import model form Now the syntax for this is kind of hard to remember, so it's really good just to sort of learn it once, maybe go onto the Django website, look at the documentation as you need it, and then just sort of copy and paste everything you need. But to get everything we need, we're just going to go within this class, go class meta, and this is going to be the metadata of the form. So we'll say model equals post. And then the fields equals all. And basically this is model form taking in this metadata and creating a form. And we're just saying all the fields of the form are going to be based on the model of post. And if we go into models.py, we can see that we have a title and a body and they're both char fields. So that's going to be how our form is structured. Now let's import this form to our view and then send it over to our template. So I'm going to hop into our views.py right now and you can see that it's currently empty for our post slash views.py. We've just used the views.py for our for the website section of our app but we don't have any logic for the posts yet. So it's going to be our first function in here. So I'll start off by saying def new and I want to give it the argument of request and then within there I want to import my form so I'll say form equals post form and it's going to grab request dot post and to actually use this post form I need to import it so I'll go from dot forms import post form and if you're wondering why I'm putting the dot before this that's because this forms file is within the same current directory as the views.py if I wanted to reference a form within the website directory I would go website.forms but since it's in the post directory where this views file currently is it's in the current working directory so that's why you add the period hopefully that makes sense so just to go over the code that we have here, first we're importing our form and then uh, within our function that we created, we're saying that post.form is going to have the values that are equal to request.post. And the request.post are going to be the values that get sent to it. So as we mentioned earlier in the course, the request object is an HTTP object that contains all the HTTP information. And just a quick review of HTTP, it has five different types of requests. You can see them here. It's post, get, 
put patch delete but more specifically we usually break this down into four and it's more commonly referenced as crud which means create read update delete and since we're interested in creating a new post we're interested in the create method which in the HTTP world is known as post so that's why when we look at our request object we're looking for the information in request.post the next thing that we need to do is render a template so let's do a return render and then we'll send the request and then our template location is under posts and we'll name it new.html and we want to send a dictionary to it and this will be the form and the object is going to be form and again this isn't syntax that you should memorize you should just uh, have a simple template and then use that template to build off of it so we have this uh, function created now let's go and create the template for this. So I actually need to create a template folder underneath posts. So I'll go new folder, I'll name it templates. And within there, I'm going to do a new folder and name it posts. And then within that subdirectory, I'm gonna go new file and call it new.html. So I'm in my template now. I'm going to copy and paste some code that I have prepared. And this code should make sense if you watch my previous video in regards to templating. It contains our base template and then underneath that we're giving the a title and then within block content I have an HTTP form created. The only new things that we haven't discussed in previous video are these two tags here, the CRF token and the form. So the form is just rendering the variable form and that variable is defined in our views which is saying form is equal to the object form which is the post form. So it's just basically bringing that in from our view. The next thing is the CRF token and all this is is a security measure that most web frameworks use and basically all it is is a unique token and it prevents someone doing a replay attack so if you ever see a CRF error it's most likely that you're missing this tag and all you really need to know about it is it's required and you should include it otherwise you're gonna get errors alright so the last major change that we need to make in our code is we need a way to get to this new form so we need to create a URL pattern so we're gonna create a very basic URL pattern and in the next video we're gonna make this a little more advanced so we get all the crud options which are create read update delete we're just gonna start with the create one so I'm gonna hop over to blog and then go to URLs and then I'm going to add a new path here. So I'll say path new goes to new. And I need to import this object new. So I'll say from posts.views import new. And that should be enough, but I am noticing an error here. So let's restart our server and see if we still get the error. And yes, I'm still getting the error, and it's a missing comma. And let's just put a, a comma at the end here as well. And it looks like our server has started, so let's hop back in. And we're back into our site. Let's refresh, and uh, we'll go over to slash new. All right, so we're getting an error here. So this is good. This helps us learn. This is going to be some good troubleshooting. Um, it looks like it knows how to get to the new method, but there's something wrong with it. So it's saying the problem is in posts slash views dot pi line number seven. And if we scroll down, we can see line number seven. It's saying form equals post form request dot posts. And I know what the error is. Let's hop back into our code and we're going to fix it here. So we're back in our view, 
Now it's saying that request doesn't have a value.post and the reason it doesn't have a value.post is because if we go back here the request method isn't post it's get and that's because we typed in the URL to get here the only way you get post method is when you hit submit on a form so let's go back in and add some additional logic to our form here and we're gonna say if request dot method equals post then the form equals this otherwise the form is going to equal post form and it's not going to be filled out it's going to be blank so I'll save it now let's go back in refresh and you can see that we can create a post here so let's create a post I'll say post by user this is a post created through the front end and excuse my loud keyboard and then when we post uh, now we're getting the error request method post request URL new so it doesn't like something here it's saying line number eight and this is embarrassing because it's just a case issue so let's go back in and the method needs to be fully capitalized so I'll say post and I think this should fix it now let's go back in and go back here and say user submitted this is a post this is a post created through the front end and now it looks like it submitted it no errors but is it on our site if we go back over to our home page it's not there so there's one last thing that we need to do let's hop back into our code and that thing that we need to do is we have this form we're filling it out with the post data but we're not saving it to the database so we need to actually go form dot save and this is going to save the data to our website and then also it doesn't make sense to just sit there after you post the data let's do a redirect so I'm gonna say return redirect and I'm just gonna to go to my root directory which is my home page and this redirect actually needs to be imported so we'll put it up here it's a Django shortcut and this should be good now I promise you let's go back in let's go slash new and let's create the post so let's say new post by user and go create it redirected and we can see the new post is there perfect so I hope all those errors that we went through uh, helped I know if I just put in all the code at once it wouldn't really make sense how each of the pieces work but I feel when you do it one at a time and sort of make a few mistakes on the way it's really helpful in the learning process with that being said let's hop back into our code here and there's one more change I want to make and I only want to save the data if the form data is valid so I'm gonna do one last check here and it's gonna be if form dot is underscore valid and you need to spell valid correctly then it's gonna save the form and return to the redirect and we can get more into this is valid tag later but basically you can build your forms with checks so if you had a field that took in an email address for example you would want to check that data to make sure the formatting is that of an email address and this way you make it so people just don't enter a bunch of gibberish into your database. So checking the data before you save it is always an important step.
One last thing I want to go over here is how we can make this look a little bit better. So our title looks fine because titles can be short, but the body input field is a little bit small considering this is meant for a longer blog post. So let's go ahead and so let's go ahead and change what the input values of our forms look like using a widget. So I'm going to hop back into my code editor and I'm going to go under forms.py and this is where we've defined our form. And all we need to do is go to the bottom here and say widgets equal, and then we're going to feed in a dictionary. And then we're going to feed in a dictionary of objects. And we're going to say for the body, we want it to be a text area. And just to review how this works exactly, the post form is using the model form and the model it's using is post which is imported from models and the two attributes in the post model is title and body so right now it's creating two input fields title and body now all this widget is doing is it's taking the body input field and it's changing it to a text area so it's pretty simple you can have widgets for any of your fields that you want to modify how they look just look up the Django documentation on how to get the specific field that you want. Now you're probably noticing that there's an error down here. That's because we haven't imported this text area object. So at the top, we're going to say text area. And actually, I'm getting a little notification here from Visual Studio Code that it's actually text area with a lowercase a. So let me fix that in both my locations. So I have that. Now I think the error will go away. Let's control C and start our server again. Looks like it started. Let's hop back into our website, refresh, and there you have it. The title is still the same size, but we got a nice big body to input our field. And if you wanted to, you could go into the widget for the text area and set the exact attribute of the width and the height so if you want to do that, just look up the documentation for the text area widget and see what attributes you, you can send to it. But anyways, I'm going to end the video here. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe and hit the notification bell. And if you'd like to, please join me in the next video. In the next video, I'm going to be going over how to further improve our forms and add a link so we can actually get to this post form. So I hope to see you all in the next video.